Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the RV Man LP Exhibition Set. Today, we're going to be continuing our chase after Crane. But first, we got to deal with the Rat King. Oh yeah, the Rat King. Let's be blunt, folks. The Rat King was always a tough enemy in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Especially in Tournament Fighters, he is a bullshit boss in that game. But whatever the case... See, I told you we were going to be fighting as a turtle, but I decided to choose Leonardo because, well, Leonardo was awesome, alright? Well, all the turtles have their are awesome in their own way, but I think uh, Leonardo's pretty cool. Stoic, but he's pretty cool. And even he has his moments where he goofs off, but he tries to be the serious guy. But whatever the case, Turtles, in a way, since at first wasn't meant to be taken seriously. There's like certain comics that makes it darker and edgier, especially the one where they were all samurai. And Jesus Christ, that was dark. And I'm pretty sure the one where Joker made himself a mutant too, that uh, Turtles and Batman crossover, that one, that one was pretty dark. But in all honesty, Turtles, in a way, was supposed to, wasn't supposed to be taken seriously, and the Foot Clan, honest to God, wasn't supposed to be humans. They only, well, like in the comics, certain iterations of them, they were humans. But in all honesty, they were robots. Robots made by Baxter Stockman, by the way, to hunt down the Turtles due to the fact that the mutagen that was supposed to be used for Shredder's plans to conquer the Earth ended up in the sewers and they were going to extract the mutagen from the turtles. That's the whole point of this whole feud with the turtles and Shredder's. And moreover, due to the fact that... uh. Hamato Yoshi was turned into a rat thanks to said mutagen. Meanwhile, Orokusaki ended up becoming, well, the Shredder. Oh, and speaking of which, his daughter's a playable character in this game. Problem of the matter is, um, it's DLC. So, yeah, I won't be playing as her, nor Usagi, as he actually was a prominent character as well. Also, thanks to Shredder's mutagen. <clears throat> so, in a way, since... Uh... Yeah, Shredder causes a lot of problems. So, what's going on with the level? Might as well talk about that while we're getting nostalgic here. We need to deal with the Mousers, and the Mousers are, without a doubt, the most annoying aspect of the stage. No, the big ones, not the small ones. The big ones can be a pain in the ass. Because <clears throat> the big ones spawn bigger Mousers. They bite into you and your, uh, uh, and your party members, and on top of the fact that they tend to hold you and drain your energy. But good news is, the more these things spawn and the more you kill, the more you level up. So you'll be at 100 in no time dealing with these Mausers. That's the only good thing I can hardly say. Yes, another genius creation by Baxter Stockman, no less. And by the way, Krang's the guy that gave him the blueprints to do this shit. Just, just to let you know. And for those who are wondering who the hell is Krang, that's the alien brain looking guy. I don't remember the name of what they were called, but that's the alien brain that is pretty much the mastermind behind most of Shredder's antics. If Shredder himself doesn't make a plan to try to undermine Krang. But more importantly, Krang came from Dimension X and he wanted to conquer Earth and Dimension X and make himself a full-on conqueror. 
And depending on which Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, he's either a menace to society or he's an escaped criminal. Or he's pretty much a race of uh, aliens called the Krang. Like in that one uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles iteration. By the way, here's the Rat King. And clearly you're fighting rats. And the Rat King himself. There's a reason why he's hard. Because the man hit hard. And the man is pretty damn strong. And the Rat King being like the Pied Piper. Literally playing a flute so all his rats would actually um, attack you. And the one thing you gotta watch out for when this comes down to the Rat King, when he rushes you. Cause he will giant swing you and it hurts. And yeah, the Rat King hits pretty damn hard. Yeah, I chose a basic character, or should I say a base character, to uh, deal with the Rat King instead of coming here with Splitter. Yeah, that's another thing. Attention to detail, Splitter gets dizzy whenever the Rat King plays that flute. So, yeah, you probably might make yourself scarce or get yourself out of the way of the Rat uh, Invasion. Otherwise, uh, the Rat King will make you dizzy. I think that's the only person that actually gets dizzy from the- Oh God! I just realized that I got caught by that giant swing. The Rat King is giving me trouble. Yes, he is. I know what you're thinking. This is the first time I've ever seen somebody struggle against the Rat King. I did this on the first try. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. But for those who didn't, I'm just warning you, the Rat King hits hard. And that's all you need to know. Oh, and by the way, Crank's body part ended up in the sewers. And Rocksteady took it. And look at April with the NPC face. I just realized they brought that ma uh, that meme in there too. <laughs> and the funny part is, April is a Channel 6 reporter, but Vernon took her spot. Yeah, that's the thing people don't understand. Uh, when it came down to Channel 6, April and Vernon... Normally, we're fighting over scoops, and Vernon was practically a dick. I wouldn't say fighting, they're more like Vernon was trying to get the scoop before April did, but April was in the thick of the action, whereas Vernon came in at the last minute. And, yeah, April's scoop was the only. Yeah, the only reason why April still had a job was because, again, she was in the thick of the action. So now, we're in the Crystal Palace Mall. And it, for those of you who aren't Turtles fans, the Crystal Palace Mall also housed the Crystal Palace Arcade, which, by the way, one of the main villains of this uh, stage just so happened to make her debut, which is Tempestra. And that's because Shredder altered the video game. As a way to trap the turtles. Whatever the case, folks, this game in and of itself is a gigantic love letter to turtles fans. And okay, fine. I wasn't gonna win without a challenge, without challenging this anyway. And <laughs> a foot soldier working at the pizza store. That's freaking hilarious. The Foot has been doing some hilarious things. There was like a cooking show at the beginning of the game. The Foot shopping. This game is really a massive love letter to Turtles. And I love it. Every single minute of it. Granted, I, I am having somewhat of a hard time here. But uh, that's due to the fact that, well, again, I was playing a character. I did not take the time to power up. And most of the... Uh, challenges that powered up the characters all went to Splinter because he had already beaten all these I've already beaten the stages as Splinter yeah eventually he's gonna be the last guy I'm gonna play as so yeah this game is definitely fun 
And mind you, this is like the third time I played this because I refought all of this. Oh yeah, and there's a poster with the punk frogs. By the way, starting chapter four, you uncover uh, areas where the punk frogs were. And they task you to get five disgusting, I think eight disgusting bugs, yes. And in case people are wondering why the disgusting bugs have something to do with the punk frogs, that's what they wanted on their pizza. No, I'm not joking. The punk frogs ate disgusting bug pizza. And I think Rasputin was the one that cooked it. So, that's how things worked. And speaking of which, the punk frogs started out as villains because Shredder created them in response to combat against the turtles. But, uh... The punk frogs soon saw that Shredder was an asshole, so, uh... They pretty much decided to fight against Shredder, and more importantly, they also fought against Leatherhead as well, so we're almost at the boss. And look at all these arcades. <laughs> all of these are Konami arcades we're destroying, by the way, in case you're wondering. I just can't remember which one's which, but I do know we all have... All of these are pretty much parodies of Konami arcades. Damn, and I thought that would have pushed into him. Oh, well. That... That, uh, foot soldier with the ball and chain, it, it could be a pain right there. And if there was a reason why, uh, you use a super in this, even though it's against the challenge, he's the reason why. That and those, uh, foot soldiers with the foot walkers. And here we are, the Shredder, once again, alters Tempestra to bring out, well, Tempestra! And her hairstyle looks almost like Tila from He-Man. Oh, and in this fight, Tempesta brings in Toka and Razor, respectively. And the only way to damage her is to defeat Toka and Razor. Yep, there's Razor right there, and his bad breath literally uh, stuns you. This probably may be the hardest fight in the game due to... Uh, how you have to take care of Tempestra. And more importantly, due to the fact that Razor hits really hard. Hey, right, that's Toka, actually. Toka hits really hard. And I got knocked down, and I'm down to one life. This is the only stage where I'm down to one life. I know, this is massive failure, but still. Ah, finally. That's the end of Tempestra. And I got control back right here. And, yeah, my controller was acting up. But at least we got it. And we are done with this level. By the way, there are 16 levels in this game, and we've already got 6 of them. We've got 10 more to go. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I say take the body of Krang. I'll see you all in the next episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. This is RV Man 985. Peace out and take care. And I think the next turtle we're playing is Mikey. Definitely.